Hi, this is Misharanya Sajid. Welcome to my channel, Nursing May You See. Today I'm going to discuss about pressure ulcers. So what is pressure ulcer? It's nothing but it's a breaking down of the skin integrity due to unrelieved pressure is known as pressure ulcers. It usually occurs in the bony prominence area. That's all about the definition of pressure ulcers. I'll explain once again. It is a skin integrity breakdown. It's a breakdown of the skin integrity due to unrelieved pressure. That is known as the pressure ulcer. Now I'm going to discuss about how this pressure ulcer is occurring. Before that I will say this pressure ulcer also known as pressure injury, decubitus ulcer and bed sores. These are the other name of this pressure ulcers. So just see how this pressure ulcers are occurring. So this is the structure of skin. Skin has epidermis, dermis and subcutaneous tissue. Under the subcutaneous tissue, there will be bones. So, in bony prominence area, always it exerts some pressure into the skin's layer. Consider a person is sitting for a long time or lying down for a long time. It can cause some kind of pressure from outside. That means when a person is sitting for a long time or lying down for a long time, it can exert pressure from outside and naturally there will be some pressure from inside that means the pressure is coming from outside and inside together and that time it can skew the area in the middle middle consists of blood supply so when these two pressures are skewing the middle area it can pinch off blood supply to epidermis and dermis and this is causing pressure injury so we learned about what is pressure ulcer and how it is occurring. Now just we are going to discuss about how this wound is healing. There will be four phases of this wound healing. First stage is known as phase of hemostasis. The second one is phase of inflammation. Then third one is the phase of proliferation. And the last one is phase of remodeling. From the name itself we all can understand what these all phases. So the first phase is phase of hemostasis. Here after occurring the wound or pressure ulcer the bleeding is stops and that's the first stage it's a stage of hemostasis then next one is the stage of inflammation then in this stage we can see the wound area is bit inflamed that's why we are calling this stage a stage of inflammation what's happening here what this inflammation is occurring here it's nothing but here all the blood networks are forming in that area for giving more nutrients and oxygen to that area then only the healing process will occur that's a stage of inflammation the next stage is stage of proliferation in the stage of proliferation the formation of the epithelial cells uh, or the tissues and scar is forming and the collagen also starts to form that's a stage of proliferation the last stage is stage of remodeling it's nothing but the tissue is going to become the normal the before wound how was the skin so skin is going to be the normal remodeling so the previous stage or the uh, status of that particular tissue is occurring that is the stage of remodeling these all are the four phases of wound healing I hope you understood the four phases. First is the hemostasis, second one is the stage of inflammation, then proliferation and remodeling. So now we are going to discuss about type or stages of pressure ulcers. So what all are the types of pressure ulcers? The first type or the stage is stage one. This is a picture of stage one pressure ulcer. So what is stage one? Just look at those picture. Here the skin is completely intact. The area will be red but will not blanch. Blanch means it will not turn to white while we are pressing. So that's the first type or first category of pressure ulcer. So here the skin will be intact and the area will be red and it will not turn to blanch. That's the first category. Then next is the stage two. In stage two pressure ulcer, look at those pictures. What is stage two? It's an example of stage two. Here the skin is visibly damaged and not intact with partial loss of dermis. But here we cannot see the subcutaneous fatty tissue. That's a stage two pressure ulcer. 
Next is stage three. In stage three, just look at those picture. That's an example of stage three pressure ulcer. Here, the skin is visibly damaged and it is not intact with full loss of skin tissue. So here will be loss of full loss of the skin tissue and may see the subcutaneous fatty tissue as well. But here we cannot see the bone tender or muscle. So that's the third stage or the third category of pressure ulcer. Next is the stage four. In stage four pressure ulcer, look at those picture. So you can see how the stage four will be looks like. See in the first section there will be hole. Here what's happening? The skin is visibly damaged with full loss of skin tissue that will expose bone, muscle, tendon and ligament. So that's the fourth stage or the stage four pressure ulcer. Look at those pictures. So we, we can see the bones there. The last stage is the unstage here. We cannot categorize this particular kind of pressure ulcer into any category. That is known as the unstaged type of pressure ulcer. Here we are suspecting that kind of pressure ulcer occurred due to deep pressure on shear but we don't know how it is occurred and there will be induced tissue damage and the depth of this particular kind of pressure ulcer is unknown look at those pictures we cannot measure the depth so this kind of pressure ulcer comes under unstaged so that's all about pressure ulcers type So now we are going to discuss about the nursing intervention. So nursing intervention of the wound care mainly included prevention, detection and wound care. For remembering the nursing intervention we can remember a mnemonic that's nothing but S skin. S S K I N. So first S is comes under the skin assessment. So once the patient is admitted to the unit we should assess for any kind of pressure ulcer. If it's there, we don't forget to document that and we should notify that to the physician and we should assess the type of wound and color and exudate and how much is the size. These are things we should assess and we should do water law assessment. It's a tool that we are doing to assess the risk of wound, uh, sorry, pressure ulcer for the person who is admitted here. These all things comes under the skin assessment. Next we are doing the next S is surface. So according to the individual needs, we should give some of the supportive measures such as pressure uh, mattress like air mattress for relieving the pressure ulcer or specialized cushion or specialized clothing for the bedding. Next, and uh, the mnemonics is the K. K include keep moving. Keep moving means we have to frequently change the position of the patient and we should make sure there should not be any rubbing of the patient's skin with the surface and use the proper manual handling methods. Then next is comes under I. I is the incontinence. So we have to make, make sure we are changing the incontinence there properly at proper time and now it is necessary and maintain the personal hygiene. The next is comes under N. N is the nutrition. The person who is at risk or who has the pressure ulcer should have high protein food and high vitamins and minerals. These all the things comes under the nursing intervention. So just remember the word S skin. S for skin assessment, surface, keep moving, incontinence and nutrition. These all are things comes under the nursing interventions of wound management or the pressure ulcer management. So here I have included the type of dressing that we can be used according to the type of pressure ulcers. So it will be easy for us to choose kind of dressing for the pressure ulcers. So first one is a stage one. In stage one, what kind of dressing we can use? Hydrocolloid dressing. An example for hydrocolloid dressing is our duoderm. So that we can use in stage one. And next dressing we can use in stage one is alginate. An example for alginate is Aquacel from A plus. 
and next is the hydrogel an example for hydrogel is indracite gel so that's all are the dressing we are using in stage one in stage two also same kind of dressing we can use that's alginate example is aquazel hydrogel is indracite gel and hydrocolloid that's a duodenum next in stage three in stage three we are using alginate ribbon the same like aquacel in the ribbon form then known adherent microbial uh, sorry topical antimicrobial dressing here an example is a inadin dressing and the polysaccharoid paste that is nothing but is a visco paste then in stage 4 we are using debride surgical excision because of the necrotic tissue and hydrocolloid hydrogel and enzymatic treatment that's all about different kinds of dressing that we are using in different stages of pressure ulcers So today we learned about what is pressure ulcer and the structure of the skin and how it is occurring and the stages of wound healing and um, what's that stages of pressure ulcers that four stages and fifth one is the unstaged and we have learned about the nursing intervention and we see different kind of dressing what we can use for this pressure ulcers so that's all about today i hope you all understood about the pressure ulcer and if you have any doubts you can put in comments i will reply you and if you have any suggestion of the topic that you want me to take of course you can comment i will put another video for that